All right, so we're here today to discuss a really big topic. It's Japanese RPG versus Western RPG, and we're not just going to attack each other. We actually have questions that make sense. And before we start, you know me, I'm Whitey, a.k.a. James, and then we have whoever wants to introduce themselves next. Uh, I'm Jimmy. I'm a friend of James, a.k.a. Whitey. Really don't have a YouTube channel. Not special. And I'm semi-special. I'm an old YouTube uh, washout named Magus X1. Hey guys, Magus here. <laughs> from the original YouTube. Yeah, from, it was good. from the when we when when YouTube was a uh, wonderful out, magical man. Man. <laughs> Okay, so today our first big topic, and I mean this one's really hard for me. I it took me a while to actually figure out what my two favorite were, mm-hmm. but today we're gonna answer. What's your favorite Japanese RPG, and what's your favorite Western RPG? And to qualify as an RPG, just about anything that's considered an RPG, we're not going to go into this has stats and this doesn't. I don't care okay. about that. If it's an RPG, and you know it's an RPG, it's an RPG. All right, that's we, we can okay. make it a philosophy video. No, we're not going to make a philosophy video. <laughs> okay, so, um, you, you guys mind if I go first? Because it took me a long time, and I just want to get it yeah, out now. Good. Okay, so... Western RPG, and some people are going to be like, oh, you're so stupid, you don't play a lot of games, but it's not Baldur's Gate, so fuck that. Um, oh. It is actually Mass Effect 2, and I know a lot of people <laughs> are going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'll tell you why Mass Effect 2 is my favorite, and it's going to come down to a later discussion of what I think makes a great Western RPG. It's getting emotionally attached to a character, and I got emotionally attached to every single character in Mass Effect 2. It was the game where I sat down, beat it in two days, and replayed it again and beat it again in the same week. That happens maybe once every five years for me. And it's that type of game that I literally became such a big fan, I have a fucking tattoo of it on my arm. So you know that this is my favorite uh, Western RPG because it just made me the biggest Western RPG fan after I played it. So there are various reasons. I love the story, I love the combat, and I also really, really love the characters, and that's a difference between story and characters for me. But I loved everything about this game. So that's my Western RPG. My my Japanese RPG is another recent one. Not that I don't love the classics like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy, because I do, but my favorite is Persona 4, mm. and there's a various reasons why. Some people think that the Persona series is terrible because it strands away from Shimagami. They would be stupid. Mm-hmm. It is a series that tries to combine a lot of elements of other games and does it pretty well. You make choices, it's a sim emulator, but on top of that, it's a good combat system with a great story. And Persona 4, there's something that I find pretty rare in Japanese RPGs, gives really good character development. It far surpasses a lot of other stories already, but the characters themselves are interesting enough to carry it by itself. So Persona 4 is that one game I sat down, I played 80 hours, beat it, and then I bought the PS Vita version, and I almost did the same thing. I'm at the end, I haven't beat it yet That's, two years later. Is, is, like, is it the same game? It's not the same game. Oh, no. It is the same, no. but they added literally, I would say, like 50 hours of content, which you just don't see developers <laughs> even try to do. Um, they even revoiced some stuff, and huh. it's just so much, ah, so good. It's so good to replay, especially on the go. This is going to be but, a uh, Persona 4 commercial, or long. <laughs> Well, but yeah, but okay. So those are my two favorite, absolute, and I have plenty damn. of others. But I'm just gonna list those two for now. All right. Uh, damn. I'll I'll go if you guys don't mind. Yeah. Go. Okay. So my, I'm just gonna get my JRPG one because if you if, if you happen to watch my channel and listen to my podcast, you know what it is. It's my yeah, favorite. I have a feeling. You, you know you know what it is, huh, James? <laughs> Call of Duty. So. No, oh, no, yes. actually, it's Battlefield. <laughs> oh, <of course. laughs> no, my favorite JRPG is my favorite game of all time, and that is Xenogears. Mm. It's a good choice. Yeah, yeah, the thing with Xenogears is, you know, I love Persona, and James is absolutely right about it, but Xenogears was that game that hit me with such good characterization, such a great, crazy story. You know, it actually had an effect on my life. It made me look, you know, I was a, I was raised Catholic. It kind of made me question things in terms of religion. Yeah, when a, when a piece of fiction starts making you question things, that's a pretty powerful piece of work. So, yeah. and, and it is. I, I don't know if you guys played it, but I mean, it's... I did. I, I love Xenogears. I fucking hate Xenosaga, but I oh. love Xenogears. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Xenosaga either, so I'm with you on that. Yes. <laughs> yes. But Xenogears is a masterpiece in it every is. It, fucking it is. level. I agree. So, um, 
Western RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, Mass Effect 2 is great, and yes, it is an RPG. It's an action RPG, so that's... Yeah. Okay, just getting out of the way. For me, though, it's Baldur's Gate 2. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, let me clarify. I like Baldur's Gate 2. I fucking but, but hate fuck Baldur's it. Gate 1. fuck it. No, fuck 1. I love 2. I mean, I don't love 2. I think 2's good, but overrated. But anyway, keep going. Uh, I, I think two, 2's in my, like, top... Maybe top 5 games of all time. Uh, wow. Yeah, I love I love Baldur's Gate 2. I've played it dozens of times. What's amazing about that game is, you know, you could play it different ways and always. For some reason, I don't know why, but you discover something new every time you play that game. And just like any great BioWare game, mm-hmm. you just fucking the characterization, the characters yeah. are just so goddamn good. You know, they're so fleshed out and it's a masterpiece too, so Good choices. All right, Jimmy, I'm dying to hear you. Well, I mean, mine aren't that exciting. I I feel kind of bad because, I mean, for... I guess, I guess I'll go with my Japanese one first. Okay. And my answer's not just going to be fuck every Japanese game. It's, uh... I'm actually really conflicted um, between Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy X. That's a, I mean, I have problems with both, but I can oh, understand, me too. especially like, us growing up, that mm, was our game. So. Yeah, like, I'm I'm not coming from, like, a Spock point of view. This is clear, <laughs> this, like, clearly wrapped up with nostalgia. Um, like, uh, I really, I think with those games, with Kingdom Hearts, what really got me is the fact that it was a Japanese RPG, and for the majority of all the games I've played that are RPGs, they were turn-based. And Kingdom Hearts just had you hopping around like an acrobatic ninja bitch slapping people. That was a really nice change of pace. And I also really enjoyed that it didn't really take itself as seriously. And I, I felt that, you know, if you ask me today what I thought of mixing a universe that has characters like Sin and Bahamut and Cloud with fucking Mickey Mouse, I would just say that you're high. But but I, they really nailed it. Like they really combined the best of both worlds, and it was just not to sound not to sound cliche. It was kind of a magical experience. I really liked it. It is. It's a great trip down memory lane. And then same thing with Final Fantasy X. Um, you know, if you ask me today, I really I think turn based combat systems are really boring. But I really like the aesthetic of the game. Like I, there's no other game out there that looks like it, um, especially at the time. And yeah. And it was just so fun getting lost in that world, even if the characters... And, and, and actually, the characters for a Japanese RPG were pretty interesting. And it, unlike a lot of RPGs, it made, like, the world made me want to explore it, which is something... Yeah, the say. world, and surprisingly to me, the combat in Final Fantasy X were really good, in my opinion. I love yeah. Final Fantasy X. I just replayed it this year because of the HD re-release. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have that, but I haven't played it yet. It, it's but, uh, really good. Um, I, I, I think it's a great game. Um, I think if anything narrative wise it suffers is it came from a time yeah, the voice acting is spot yeah. at oh times. My God. There's That's not talking there's, about points, <laughs> <laughs> there's points where it's really good and there's points where it's kinda like okay. But <laughs> basically anytime you just spoke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. Good> example. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay so so that's Final Fantasy X and Kingdom Hearts for you. We'll, we'll, I, I say we give him both, James. Yeah, I give him both because they're a very similar time period, too. I think they're like a year apart, yeah. and not even. Yeah, they're a year apart. Oh, cool. James. So what's your Western? I'm, re- I'm really interested well, in Well, I mean, to be honest, you stole it from me because Mass Effect 2, nothing in all of my time playing video games, single player at least, made me feel as just worried and intensely yeah. drawn in, like, the fucking suicide mission. There's, yeah. like, I really like how in that game, like, you said, you invest in the characters, and you spend a lot of time just cultivating these relationships. And at the same time, they give the player a lot of choice, which is something you don't really see in a lot of games in general, and especially not in Japanese RPGs. But I really liked how, with the loyalty missions in those games, you can choose to, like, bring your characters down a path of vengeance or redemption in a lot of cases. It really made you feel like the characters were your actual friends and you were changing their lives. So when you get to the end and they could potentially die, it made every single choice you had to make so intense. 
Agreed. And I lost the two fucking people I like the most. Yeah, so I really you know what? Off. You lost a lot of people, and I <laughs> don't understand. I, I lost Jack. I was like, what the fuck? And then I lost the fucking girl. Uh, what's her name? Right. The helmet. And I'm, oh, no, the, hel- and I'm the asshole yeah, whose that. whole team survived the first time I played. God, God damn, damn it. Same here. You just gotta <laughs> upgrade the ship and not be James. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just around. Okay, so there's our list, and I mean, I was actually not, not yeah, I was kind of surprised at some of them, but not, not all. But yeah, so that's our list for the top uh, Japanese and West 